Nazi Afzal is the director of the Crown Prosecution Service. Thank you very much for giving up your time. Um, Nazir, what is the significance of this conference today? I think it's a very important day, in fact, a day to be celebrated. What we have today is every single senior police officer around the country who is a specialist in this field, together with specialist prosecutors and other agencies, uh, and to hear the voices of the uh, amazing victims and, and families of victims, uh, to try and get a feel for how this impacts on people and more importantly what we as statutory bodies can do in partnership with the charities uh, to prevent this from happening in the first place and ultimately if it has happened to ensure that we provide the best response. You at the CPS recognised that things just weren't good enough and so this summer you quite literally re rewrote the guidelines didn't you? You rewrote the book. Um, just talk me through why you did that. I, th I think um, Earlier on this year, earlier on in 2010, um, I became aware of the fact that we weren't doing these cases particularly well. We were making some, as, as prosecutors, we were making some very basic errors, uh, and perhaps um, investigators were as well. And so um, what I wanted to do was understand that by talking to um, the charities, victims, uh, my own practitioners, what it was that we could do differently, how we could uh, ensure that we provide a better response. And um, that meant rewriting everything we do. That meant uh, ensuring that everybody's trained in the new approach or the, the better approach. And ultimately, under, underpinning that is a, an understanding of the impact that victims uh, suffer as a result of stalking. And if you understand that impact, then you will provide a better service to, uh, to victims and you will ensure that pro people are properly investigated and, and prosecuted. So um, it was because of failure, really, that I decided that it was important for us to learn from that and to act upon it. Uh, but we're only at the beginning now. Uh, now we have the guidance, we have all the tools, uh, police, prosecutors, but it's now about working in partnership with the charities and, and victims to ensure that we deliver justice in every case. Victims still say that they're worried that if they come forward they're just not going to be taken seriously enough and what they also say is that they fear having to face their perpetrator in court. Um, what would you say to allay those fears? I would say that um, we've learned a great deal from how we deal with domestic violence over the last uh, two decades uh, and that really is about ensuring that victims are protected, that they're given uh, every element of security that's possible, including in some cases anonymity, uh, to ensure that they give their very best evidence. And um, I'm pleased to be able to say that in three quarters of cases, people don't have to give evidence because they will plead guilty. Uh, the perpetrator will plead guilty. But where you do have to give evidence, there are lots of special measures available, which include screens, um, which include giving evidence by video links, so you don't even have to be in the same building, which include um, witness support and victim support, um, and ultimately, as I said in the most extreme cases, the ability to give that victim anonymity uh, so that they don't even, uh, will never be reported, and more importantly, uh, their name does not come out, and they don't feel as if they have to be um, the reason why that person is, is in court. Uh, the justice system should be about the state doing justice, not about the victim doing justice. Uh, and so we should be doing everything that we can as prosecutors and police officers to ensure that the victims have the most comfortable, if that's the right word, um, uh, process uh, in order to give their best evidence. Um, but it should be about providing them with all the tools that are necessary uh, to do that.